is at peace. Hurry home. That was the trailer for Arcane Studios Dishonored, a game that deserves all the praise that it gets, a game that gives the player choice like no other, a game that perfected stealth. Is that a bit much? Fuck yeah it is, but also fuck no it isn't. I wholeheartedly stand by the claims that this is the greatest stealth game of all time. Dishonored takes all the things that made the stealth games that came before it great and makes a product that destroys the competition. I've been needing to discuss this game and its amazing sequel for so long, but I could never figure out when to do it. But since Dishonored just turned 10 earlier this month, I couldn't think of a better time than now. I'm gonna start by talking about the story as I don't have that much to say about it. He plays Corvo Otano, the royal protector of Jessamy Caldwin, who rules over the city of Dunwall, which is basically Gotham but worse and medieval. <laughs> Corvo has a really close friendship to Jessamy and her daughter Emily. It's almost like he's her father or something. And after Corvo returns home from his grand adventure of watching people die from the plague, he goes to meet with Jessamy only for a group of assassins to show up. After fighting them off for a few minutes, it proves pointless as Jessamy is still murdered anyway. <laughs> kidnapped. Jessamine dies in Corvo's arms and he's immediately blamed for her murder. And then you spend the rest of the game trying to clear your name and getting revenge on everyone who wronged you. You eventually rescue Emily and kill the motherfuckers who framed you, and Emily then takes her rightful spot on the throne. The game has multiple outcomes for the ending depending on your playstyle. That is whether or not you kill every motherfucker or spare them, or who you choose to associate with throughout the game. You have several targets throughout the game and it's up to you to choose how to deal with them. Revenge is a really simple premise but the game does so much and it builds on it greatly with the world building and the awesome villains. We're also rooting for Korfo the whole time as we know the truth of what these guys are planning and when you eventually kill them... God, it feels amazing. I don't want to spoil that much as I think this story is actually pretty good. I'll just say there's a lot of twists and betrayals along the way and the characters are surprisingly memorable. My only issue lies at the pacing as the third act comes to a complete halt multiple times it gets kind of annoying. Even though the story is simple it has an undeniable charm about it and it's definitely memorable. But now it's time to talk about the gameplay. <laughs> Every game requires you to make choices, whether that's a story-based choices in the Walking Dead games, or a really dumb and pointless choice that doesn't matter at all, such as seen in the end of GTA V. Why would I want to kill either of those? Obviously you want to go with Death Wish. Haha, <laughs> two callbacks in one sentence, baby. Choices to be expected in video games. Without them, the medium simply couldn't exist. But I haven't played a game that requires nearly as much choice and input as Dishonored. Every single second is a choice, how you play, what route you choose, what abilities and weapons, everything. The most popular choice in this game is whether or not to kill people, as you can complete the entire game without killing a single person. Of course I don't understand why you would want to do this in your first playthrough considering killing is so aggressively fun, 
but it does actually make the game easier at times. I say this because the game varies based on what level of chaos you're on. The more people you kill and the more people who spot you will raise you up to a high chaos level, which will change certain encounters, and add new enemies in areas that they wouldn't spawn otherwise, and even changes the story's outcome. If you choose to spare everyone it will be reflected in the gameplay, making Dunwall a much safer environment for you and its inhabitants. I highly encourage you to do multiple playthroughs to really get a full feel of this game's different playstyles. But if you're really invested in the game, you'll probably want to do it anyway without me telling you to. The level design works in hand with the choice system perfectly. There's so many paths you can take to reach your goal, from rooftops, to sewers, to alleyways, to abandoned buildings. Literally load any of your saves in the game and look up and I guarantee there's several different routes you can take. Every building or room has multiple entrances and exits, and I'm hard pressed to think of that many areas that only have one entrance that you can access. The scale of Dunwall is absolutely incredible and I love finding new ways to traverse it. You can also make progress without using your power, sneaking around enemies and only dealing with them when absolutely necessary. You also don't need powers to climb the buildings. If you see a point you want to get to it, I guarantee there's a path that you can climb up to get to that place. Although it's clear that the devs never originally planned for you to do that this much as the climbing kind of feels clunky in this game, the game requires the player's attention at all times and rewards the more observant players. The ones who think outside the box will often be luckier than other players, like maybe you decide to climb over the golden cat instead of going through it, and so you'll find a direct route to one of your targets that also acts as a quick getaway. I didn't notice this on my first playthrough and had to try to sneak through the entire interior of the building which is full of enemies, which is super fun. The game also has environmental kills you can discover similar to Hitman that will allow you to take out your enemies and make it look like an accident. This also helps so that people won't be on high alert looking for an assassin the entire time. The game's environments are fucking immaculate from the dark alleyways to the sprawling mansions all the way to the flooded district. It's all beautiful and so well crafted. It feels like a real place. There's so many places to go and I'm still discovering things to this day. The game mixes this dark steampunk world with the supernatural elements fantastically. Speaking of the supernatural, I guess we should should actually talk about the gameplay now. Play your way as a dev say and I've never seen a game live up to the idea quite like this one. You can go about your task however you see fit, whether that be by murdering everybody with a pulse, or sticking to the shadows and soaring above the villains heads. Like I said earlier, you don't have to kill people in this game, so when it comes to your targets, you can either kill them or find an alternative way to deal with them, such as kidnapping one and branding them like you're Ben Affleck, or releasing a villain's evil dialogue to the entirety of the city so he's eventually arrested. I actually think he might get executed, so I guess that motherfucker dies either way. <laughs> you're still not directly killing him though. As I said earlier, low chaos is easier than high chaos and the game even recommends you kill as little people as possible. But when killing feels this fucking good, how can I not do it? That's actually the point, this game makes it extremely satisfying to kill dudes by stabbing them in the fucking neck. But in turn they do things like spawning more enemies that are more cautious because someone's been killing all of them. The high and low chaos system is one that I'd love to see other games attempt. I think it's bold to make the player face their sins as a person. Some of my favorite gaming moments stem from ideas like this, like in Metal Gear Solid 3 where you see several people you kill walking around as ghosts, and literally reciting what they said when they died. Or you know the entirety of Far Cry 3 basically. I'm sorry. And I've never seen a game capture it quite like Dishonored. So let's discuss why the murder feels so goddamn good in this game. But before we can talk about this game's amazing stuff and powers, we have to talk about the combat, because it kind of sucks, honestly. When an enemy sees you, they'll immediately attack you by either trying to stab you or shooting you with their infinite ammo having ass guns. When you engage in combat, literally all you do is scratch them until they fall over, or sometimes Corvo will do a cool finishing move. You can also parry them, which is the easiest shit in the world, by the way, and it makes them immediately vulnerable for an instant kill. I mean, at least these animations are really cool. <laughs> also, if you don't want to fight them, you can just shoot them with your own gun, and let's talk about that real quick, because I think the gun is my least favorite part of the game. It's never practical, and sometimes it just misses people entirely. The only time it's ever useful is if a bunch of enemies are attacking you at once. But even then, if you just had the wind blast power unlock, you can knock them down and just stab them all to death. <laughs> and the crossbow is so OP, it's not even funny. If you have arrows in this, game, everybody dies. You can just pop these fuckers in the head from halfway across the map and call it a night. And it's so easy to aim, it almost never fails. The game tries to balance it out by having some enemies wear helmets, but you can just shoot them in the leg once again and stab them in the fucking neck. Or you can just shoot them with a tranquilizer dart and knock them the fuck out. I recognize its flaws, but its purpose in the game makes sense to me. I'm like that fucking gun. <laughs> Unlike this stupid ass gun, the crossbow has three different types of arrows. There's a regular unaliving arrow, a sleep arrow which knocks people out from a distance, and the incinerary arrow which does, well, except Exactly what you would think it does. Ah, uh, it never gets old. Speaking of never getting old, the stealth in this game is still the greatest stealth I've ever played. 
bar none. Now I get that that's a bold claim. The amount of great stealth systems in gaming is nearly endless. And what makes Dishonored so special anyway? Well, as I said earlier, my friend, powers, dear viewer. Powers. <laughs> no game has ever made powers feel as cool as Dishonored. Well, except for maybe Saints Row 4, Stubbs a Zombie, Prototype, every Spider-Man game, and so on, but whatever. No other game has powers that feel as fun to me personally than Dishonored does. I'll just go over the list and explain why they're awesome. The first power you get is Teleportion, or the Blink, where you hold down the left trigger and release it on where you want to teleport. You're then swiftly pulled over there as everything slows down for a few seconds. Now granted, you can't go everywhere at this thing, you only have a certain distance it's allowed to reach, but you can upgrade it to reach further distances and freeze time entirely. Uh oh, did you just fall off a building? Shut the fuck up, no you didn't. Then there's the dark vision, which allows you to see where your enemies are through walls, and allows you to see what they can see. It's basically just detective vision. Then there's the ability to bend time, which slows down time temporarily, and allows you to stab motherfuckers in the throat before they can even register what just happened. This can also be upgraded to basically stop time entirely, or come really close to it anyway. Then there's wind blast, which is exactly what it sounds like. And then there's possession, which only works on rats at first and a few various other animals, but once upgraded can possess enemies which is fucking awesome. You can literally move them in front of their own bullets if you want to. And last but certainly not least, Rat Swarm. <laughs> That's so cool. I don't need to explain why that's cool. It's just cool. <laughs> you can also upgrade other things such as your agility, which allows you to defy the laws of physics itself. Well, I guess the entire game does, but anyway. <laughs> the reason you have all these abilities is because of an entity called the Outsider. Some floaty dude who gives you a tattoo that looks really sick, man. The Far Cry tattoos ain't got shit on this. <laughs> the way you unlock and upgrade powers is by collecting runes which will be placed in specific spots around levels. Finally, a collectible that actually fucking matters. The Outsider also gives you a heart, which contains the soul of Corvo's now dead love interest. She'll guide you in your journey and even tell you what kind of people the guards are so you can decide whether or not to kill them. Spoiler alert, they all suck. <laughs> now with all these abilities, the game might sound too easy, but I can assure you that that's not the case. The game has convenient and memorable handicaps for players such as requiring these blue things to use your powers, or the many traps that prevent you from achieving your goal, such as the wall of light, this sappy little fucker, and the big ass watchtowers that shoot bombs at you. Now whilst these are annoying, they can also be used to your advantage, as you can find or purchase a rewiring tool and use it against your enemies. Using one of the watchtowers against your enemies is like crack, it's so fun. I can't really think of what else to talk about or how to segue out of this, so I'll just say, uh, uh your mom? Dishonored easily earns the must-play rating Metacritic gave it. It's probably my favorite game of all time. I've never played a more complex and interesting game in my life, and it's amazing to me that we have not one, but two of these amazing masterpieces to play, and possibly a third one coming in the future? Arcane is one of my favorite studios and I can't wait to see what comes next. Oh, and you can bet your ass that I'm gonna make a Dishonored 2 video. Something literally nobody asked for, but I'm gonna give it to you anyway. So be on the lookout for part two. Thank you.